Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Super Coach. It's going to be the round five review, and as you can see, we had a we had a pretty good week. I mean, the score is very high. It, it was just, I mean, I I wasn't again. It, it's so hard to pick this year, like how your score is really gonna match up. But I was looking like on Twitter people posting their own scores and it seemed like a lot of people had some pretty high scores and I guess that it makes sense like most of the the top line guys just went well and um and thankfully nothing really hurt us too badly uh so we'll get into the team what we did uh, but yeah 1335 top 8% for the week so yeah it was a very very high week average score of 1125 which is I thought honestly I thought it'd be a bit higher than that honestly but we did jump. We're, we're making moves. We're, last couple of last couple of weeks, we're starting to climb. We're in the ten thousand spot now. Well, we're in we're inside the ten thousand uh, ranking, nine thousand six hundred and forty nine, uh, and and I feel like we're we're set up pretty well. Um, there was only really one thing that annoyed me about last week. Uh, but the, uh, before we get into it, the only problem is that I feel like it's going to be. For whatever reason, like in previous years, I felt like there was always a good chance to catch up, but I don't know, this year it feels like it's going to be tough to actually catch like the top couple of thousand because it seems like everybody has basically the same teams, if I'm being honest, like everybody has the, the, the same guns. I guess it's just, you know, what other, what other pods you can try to get in, but I don't know. It feels like everybody has the same, <laughs> same plays to an extent. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess we just got to nail the captaincy every week. That's, that's the way super coach is. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get into the finer details about the scoring. And yeah, overall, it was uh, just just pretty solid. Um, Harry Grant came out 81, very nice, thankfully. Um, it made the, the decision to go him over Nico Hines. Not a good one. <laughs> it, still, it still cost, I, I think Hines did, annoyingly, he did update like an, almost another 20 points. Um, old Mr. Unicorn Nico Hines. But uh, yeah, he got about 100, I think, a bit over 100. So didn't hurt us too badly this week thankfully um and thankfully grant came out and scored well wade egan 64 you love to see it he scored another try um yeah i i so we'll talk about it a bit more after this but egan i am somewhat leaning towards egan now being the guy after the buy to just bring in hines very easily but we'll we'll talk more about that later uh the front row Joe Tarpany, 61. I mean, he's averaging over 60. He just... Uh, it's, it, it's, it's one of those ones, man. If I just... If I started paying Haas, but I mean, at the end of the day, Tarpany, I, I picked him because he's going to be in the team for the whole season, unless he obviously gets injured or suspended. Um, but he's going to be here for the long run. I just hope there's some... I just hope there's a few more offloads coming because <laughs> seeing Payne Haas get bloody almost 100 again, it's it's starting to hurt. Christian Welsh, 55. It is what it is. Welsh, I might be getting rid of this week. It it sort of depends. Uh, Utsikamanu, 43. And Franklin Pelle played 31, but now he has got a fractured forearm. So he's he's a no-go, no go, which is fine. Honestly, Pelle being out doesn't really matter. Like... At the end of the day, none of the other cheapy forwards are doing basically anything. Um, so, you know, he's just not going to hurt us, like, in a in a loophole situation. So, yeah, it is what it is. I, I don't... There's no real urgency to trade him out. Um, but Christian Welsh, there is an urgency just because Utsikamanu... I'm not playing him because I've got good depth. And it's just like... Christian Welsh is barely scoring. I mean, the averages are basically the same. So it's like, I, 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 the Christian, ah, oh, the Welsh one's really pissing me off. <laughs> I gotta be honest. He, he's really, he's really grinding my gears because yeah, we, we should have, I, I, I just shouldn't have spent so much money in the front row. It would have helped me out uh, in other areas. Although, I mean, everything else is like pretty good. It's just, uh, yeah, Welsh, he's just, he's underperforming. Um, but yeah, the front row as a whole, I think, is. We'll, we'll have a, a little bit more of a look at the front row after this as well. Payne Haas is most definitely the, the outlier at the moment. Um, the back row was up and down. 
So, T. Wilton, 60. He did score a try. Um, he, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. T, I don't think he got a line break for the try because it was, I don't, I, actually, I don't know if he got the line break for the try. I don't think he did when I was watching, when I, I was looking at the stats during the game. For, for whatever reason, I don't know why he didn't though, because it, Usually, even ones like that where they're that close to the line, they still get the line break. So, I'm not too sure about that. Maybe that he did get it, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, regardless, 60, it's good. I mean, it's not bad at all, but he's definitely a guy we could look at getting rid of. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not No urgency at the moment. Jermaine Hotgood, 47. You know, he, he did lose money this week. And I think... I think Hopgood actually is going to be a trade out in uh, in a couple of weeks, if I'm being honest, because when do they have their buy? It's not till late, is it? Yeah, like round 14. And also they cover the the big buy rounds nicely. So part of me, I don't want to get rid of him. Do you just... I don't know. It, I guess it depends the minutes, but I just... The issue is that Sean Lane is going to be coming back into the side probably this week. If not, then I'd say next week. What happens with the back row? Because what if Ryan Madison... Who knows? Maybe he goes back into lock. Hopgood goes to the back to the bench. I wouldn't imagine that would happen. I still think Madison would play on an edge, but they're definitely using Madison through the middle at points. Spelling Hopgood. I mean, Paulo will be back from suspension in a bit. He plays big minutes. Campbell Gillard plays big minutes. Sean Lane will play 80 minutes on edge. If Cartwright goes back to the bench, he could spell in the middle as well. So I, I think Hopgood's minutes are going to potentially be an issue coming up. But yeah, I mean, definitely not an urgent trade out. It's still a wait and see what happens when they have basically their their full strength forward pack it'll get a you know a good idea of what we can expect but you know the score was a bit like i think he still played like a bit over 60 minutes so it was just he could have still gone 60 plus it was just one of those games where he just didn't quite have the impact i think a couple of errors and uh and yeah not not many offloads or so, anything like that so one of his lower games with the minutes was still good so yeah not not an issue jacob preston 108 i mean what a what a man um yeah i mean he, he's he's absolutely killing it I, I i'm very happy i bought him in a few weeks ago i was somewhat tempted to fade him but it was just too good to pass up and uh yeah he's been absolutely killing it ever since uh obviously dave feeder will be back this week cartwright so cartwright is definitely on the chopping block his price may not have peaked yet but It'd be getting close. Like I was expecting Cartwright to get around 450, potentially 500k if he if he, you know, got a couple of attacking stats. But you know, 36 now, he potentially could start leaking cash. Um, and like I said, with Sean Lane coming back probably this week, if not next week, I think Cartwright is he's just a really easy player to move on from. He's done a fantastic job for me. Obviously annoying that I played him this week and he, he stunk it up a bit, but I mean, he's been fantastic. I, I cannot be disappointed. Uh, Jackson Ford, 43. So I did bring him in. Um, who did I trade out? Oh, Luke Garner. That's right. I got rid of Garner for Ford. Now I didn't play Ford because I, I wasn't really expecting a big score and it wasn't. He only scored 43 in 80 minutes, which is... <laughs> You know, it's it's okay. I, I still think Ford is a good pickup. He's going to make some good money. He might not be as good as what people think he is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was a weird game because he didn't really get many chances with the footy. It was wet weather as well, which stops like offloading a fair bit and, and tackle breaks to an extent. There was still a lot of points scored in that game. It was a... Oh, absolute what a, what a game that was but um but yeah not a, not a typical you know where, where the conditions even if there's high scoring games like they still bring the scores down for most players if it's wet weather so i'm not too displeased with that um the halves so nathan cleary 124 um you know i there were there were definitely quite a few people trading cleary for nico hines which i thought was fucking madness um i wonder how many Let's see the percentage of owners. Surely it's really high still. 
Um, 42%. So that's... It's high, but it's not probably as high as you would expect. And yeah, he's now at 124. He's going to start going up in price. Uh, Tanner Boyd will be back this week. Adam Dewey. So now this is the one that annoys me, right? So Isaiah Katoa got 40 as well. But Dewey, I, I, so Schuster obviously was ruled out late in that, uh, in the week for that game, which gave me a really good excuse just to keep hold of Dewey. Um, because I, I, I wasn't like sold on selling him straight away because for one, I feel like I can make the money to get Hines or if not, like, like I said at the start, Wade Egan swinging him down to half, swinging Boyd back up to dummy half. It will be so, it'll be so easy to get Hines in that way that I wasn't like that keen to just get rid of Dewey straight away. And I thought, you know what? A lot of people are going to be a little bit potentially in trouble because, I think, I think a fair few people that brought Hines in either this week or last week probably had the combo of Schuster and Katoa. Obviously, I'm sure there were people that didn't and they, you know, they're killing it. But a lot of people would have had that and they would have had to have played Katoa, who got 40, which is fine. But I was just hoping that Dewey could jag a couple of attacking stats, you know, get like 70 plus and it would have been a really nice little swing for me and uh, anyone else that kept hold of Dewey. Because I wonder... Again, I'm curious to see the ownership. Um, 19% might be a lot of people struggling, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 still unsure of what to do with Dewey. I gotta be honest. I just I don't know. I feel like I should just get rid of him, but there's decisions to make because I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a tough one. We'll, we'll talk about talk a bit about it later uh and then the center wing so lock i mean this is where we 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 made our money lachlan miller 95 jacob kira 76 i mean these two they're 740k they're, they're killing it val holmes is 60 which is i mean it's fine like he's averaging 60 which is fantastic but he just can't he just can't get any attacking stats and then uh to Ruva with the 63 with two tries um both didn't have line breaks but still 63 i was hoping for a bit more because well i don't know Taruva is a weird one because I mean, this was a weird game because, again, like, he didn't... I guess the Panthers flogged the Raiders, so you're obviously not going to get as many, like, tough carries out of your own end when you're just scoring tries constantly. So his base is obviously down, but he got the two tries. Um, but I feel like he's just such a good, safe play every week that... I don't know. I think eventually he will be a trade out, but he's he's killing it for now. You can't be displeased. Uh, and then the the man here, Connolly Lemuelu. So I did trade out Alamotti for him. I think Alamotti still scored like forty, which is pretty good. He still made a bunch of cash, but I just I just felt like Lemuelu is a better option now. Like he made, what did he make this week? He made yeah he made fifty k this week. He scored 53, and I played him, so he got he got 10 more points than Alamotti. I, I think, well, there's two things. One, he's a better play every week because he's an edgeback rower. He's got good work rate. Um, he did miss a couple of tackles in that game, but I thought he was still really, like, I don't know, dude. I think he's really, really good. He didn't get much chance with the ball, but every time he runs it, dude, he is a powerhouse. He got that nice little offload away that didn't get the try assist, but he did sort of, it did lead up to the just sensational try to Fido. That was, I mean, honestly, one of the tries of the season. It was beautiful. Um, but he's got something about him. So I, 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 I don't know. I, I like it. And also, he's dual second row forward and center wing, which is beautiful. There, there's not that many in the game nowadays. So... Um, very, very nice little duel there. Uh, Khan Pereira obviously didn't play, and Warbrick with a nice little 58, if you don't mind. And then the fullbacks, whew, the fullbacks killing it. Jake, uh, not Jake, Tom Javoyevich, 106. Put the captaincy on him. I mean, that was the other reason why I wasn't that concerned with not having Hines. Obviously, I was <laughs> I was a little concerned at half time because Hines was on, I don't know, what was he on, like 60, 70 points? The Warriors had a man in the bin for like the next 10 minutes coming back for the break. And somehow, Hines, like I said, he did update another like 20 points. But he only finished on like 100 odd points. So, um, that was nice. <laughs> that was very nice. Thank you, Warriors, for not uh, breaking my heart. Um, but yeah, I, I was pretty confident Trebojevic would 
go big and he was he was close to going really big but again you can't be i i cannot complain with 100 captaincy my captains have been dreadful so that feels good feels very good and then reese walsh with a, a 99 absolutely on fire um Trebojevic though oh my god so Lachlan Miller <laughs> the fucking the try to Olikowatu dude now I I love Miller but my god I was I was very tilted watching that as a as a Tom Trebojevic owner and a captain I was just like Miller for fuck's sake can you please all he had to <laughs> he just had to put a little pressure on Olikowatu and Olikowatu would have just passed the ball back on the inside to Trebojevic, who would have scored under the post. I was losing my mind. Oh, my God. I mean, again, it's only a 17-point 17, 17 swing, but I did add a captaincy as well. So, that was... that was Oh, it was tilting. When I, As soon as I saw that, I just... My heart sank because I thought this is going to be one of those weeks. Trebojevic is going to fucking stink it up and I'm going to lose my mind. But uh, thankfully, he still came out and, and posed a 100-pointer. And thankfully for Golden Point because he, he got a few points in uh, in Golden Point, which is nice. Um, but yeah, overall, the team, I think, is looking pretty, pretty damn solid. Um, like I said in previous videos, obviously, Hines is the, the must-trade after the buy. So, however, we're going to bring him in. I'm, like I said, I, I, Wade Egan, obviously, he keeps scoring tries, which is lovely. But, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see how he goes this week again. He played, I think he played 80 minutes. Um, yeah, he played 80 minutes. Just, I don't know, the base wasn't quite there in that game. Again, it was a, it was a wet, it was a wet game. So that I don't know, just in general, base is always down in wet weather footy. Um, and there was a lot of points scored, so less time in play for for tackles and runs. Um, they got the Knights and then the Cowboys. Obviously, we got to make the decision after the Knights game though, because if we're swinging him on to Hines, then we got to do it that way. But uh, because it, he's going to go up another like a bunch of cash still. And it's just so easy to swing him onto Hines. But, like, honestly, I, as a second hooker, I feel like he's almost the the, the best option. Um, also, not going to play Origin. It's nice, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a tough one. But that's what I'm... I am leaning towards that because I do think he is going to peak and probably start leaking cash after a while because... He just can't keep up the, the attacking stats. And even with decent base, like, he's got pretty good base... He's probably not going to be pushing like much past 60 if he doesn't get tries and, tr you know, try assists. So, yeah, he's he, he's pending. Um, who else? So, Dewey. Honestly, Dewey, I just want to trade Dewey for Dylan Brown. It's, it's about 200k. And this is the other reason why I'm sort of like Egan going to Hines would make it so much easier to get Dewey up to Dylan Brown. Because Brown, they have a good matchup against the Tigers, which is good. Dylan Brown's coming off a couple of 40s, so his price is dipped. It could still dip a bit lower, but... Because um, if we look here uh, at Hopgood, the Eels, I think the Eels start to have a pretty good run coming up. And, and the good thing about the Eels, and this is why I definitely want Dewey, and not Dewey, I definitely want Brown, because they cover the major buys, which is beautiful. He's not going to play Origin. Like, Dewey is almost a must. Uh, fucking Dewey. <laughs> I keep looking at him. Um, Dylan Brown is all, he's almost a must-have, in my opinion. Um, obviously, the scores haven't been great the last couple of weeks, but he just, he's so safe. Um... Because, yeah, they got Tigers, Bulldogs, Broncos, Newcastle, Gold Coast, Canberra. That's a damn good run. And then they play Rabbitohs, Cowboys in round 13, Bayern round 14. And then, yeah, it's just such a good little period. So I sort of want more Eels players a little bit. Um, is it frozen? What the hell? What the hell are you doing? Okay, we're back. That's pretty. As soon as I like pause the recording, it it, it fixed itself. But fuck, <laughs> goddamn, super coach. Um, but yeah, that's why I want Dylan Brown for sure. 
And uh, and yeah, it's only it's, I mean it's two hundred k difference about probably a touch more. I think Brown's probably like seven forty maybe. I want to say. Um, so there's that. The back line. I mean the back line is so strong. Now obviously I want Ruben Garrick and. The, what I was thinking originally was potentially, because again, I think Reese Walsh is going to hit a ceiling, but they've got a good run still. They got, they got Canberra, Gold Coast, and then it gets a little tough. So honestly, out of fullback options, I mean, I'm not really that keen on Latrell. Tedesco, obviously, tough luck for Tedesco owners copying a... Copying a concussion and then you know Origin will be coming up in a in a you know a little bit as well. I think Ruben Garrick is like the best fullback option. So after this Gold Coast game, I honestly I might swing Walsh, and this could work beautifully because you swing Walsh to Garrick. Garrick is your second fullback. You have bloody Triple H and Garrick, and then once I don't know uh, any of them, Cam Pereira, Warbrick, or Taruva sort of hit their peaks, swing Garrick into the center wing and trade one of those guys out for, I don't know, any fullback that that's looking like uh, a keeper at that point. Or, you know, if Kiraz or Miller start going backwards for whatever reason. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards that. Now, don't get me wrong, I do want Garrick, but for one, they play Penrith this week. So it's not... It's not urgent to get him in this week for sure. And then what have they got? So yeah, Penrith, Melbourne. I mean, Melbourne definitely aren't the team they have been. So it's not necessarily that tough. But then they go <laughs> West Tigers and Gold Coast. So I mean, ugh, I definitely would like him by then. Um, and is that actually, is that perfectly for when Walsh? Actually, yeah. I mean, that would be perfect for Walsh trading out. So I mean, that that's just a rough plan at the moment. Whether or not it, it comes to fruition, we'll see. But it seems good in my head. <laughs> Definitely seems good. Um, but it, it... I mean, if Walsh comes out and kills it again, like he goes another like 80 plus the next two weeks, it'd be hard to trade him out just because they have a tougher game coming up. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll work it out. We'll see what happens. Um, so Christian Welsh also has to go. Bryce Cartwright... It, it depends. Now, obviously, Schuster... I still think Schuster is, like, a must-have. Again, they're taking on Penrith and Storm. So, he could score badly. But I still think he's a, he's going to be a great cheapie. Obviously, I could trade out Dewey for him. Bank the cash. Um, or, I trade out Cartwright for him. Bank the cash that way. And do we we give another week? Because I, I can't... Yeah, I can't really see myself going anyone else but Brown in the 5-8 spot. We'll, we'll have a look in a second. Um, hopefully, Tanner... It would be so beautiful if Tanner Boy could just come out and start averaging like 50 points. Because then swinging him back up to my second dummy half and trading Egan out for Hines would be... It would be, it'd be beautiful. It'd work perfectly. Um, but we'll see. And I gotta be honest, if Tanner Boy can make a bit of cash, I'm honestly not opposed to bringing Brandon Smith back as my second dummy half for Boyd, because, you know, hopefully the Roosters will have hit their straps. Um, you know, Smith will be a good play, obviously, over Origin. He's got no Origin. And if he starts finding a bit of form, I'm still a bit worried because he, I don't know, just looking at him, even with tries and tries, this he's... I just can't see him going big, but yeah, I don't know. It's one to think about. And then Christian Welsh, it sort of depends. I, I would love to trade Welsh out for Isaac for Saw Moali. Um, anyone else? Like, we'll look at the front rows quickly. So Payne Haas is fucking... I mean, look at the points difference. He's absolutely destroying every other front rower and he's owned by 44 percent which is the real kicker um max king there second joe tarpany tom gilbert i mean he only scored 45 campbell gillard out of blake 30s uh big tino obviously on a bye um laurie got 86 twice safidi 
I mean, Harris, I, I definitely wouldn't be bringing Harris in yet with that injury concern. So hopefully his price can dip a little bit and we can pick him up later. Um, Clemmer, Welsh. I mean, all these other guys, like, I'm just not keen on at all. I mean, Lindsey Collins has actually been okay. Um, he's averaging 61, but... Yeah, I don't know. He's he sort of flown under the radar a little bit, Lindsey Collins. And I don't know, at this point, I don't really want to bring in another 500k forward. Or front row, I should say. He, he'll probably go, well, I don't know. Will he go to Origin? Maybe. Um, Jake Dubojevic with a 62. <laughs> uh, probably in base. But the the main one, because if we look at the, the cheapies are fucking awful. <laughs> like the front row... I don't know. I mean, other than Payne Haas, I mean, I, the other guys have been scoring okay, like the, the real top-line guys, but the cheapies are ordinary. Because, um, yeah, obviously... Pele, I mean, Greg. I, I actually thought Greg would have scored more than 33. I thought he was really good um, for the Eels without uh, Polo. But, again, like, his minutes will never be that good, and when Polo comes back, they'll be... In the, in the ground. Um, Tom Ali, only 25 there. Um, Lindsey Smith, obviously, you know, he's not going to play many minutes, but he scored 61. David Mowali, 29 points. Just, <laughs> he's just not doing it. Um, ben Monaco Masilla, I mean, he scored 50, honestly. I mean, I don't know. Do you, I... <laughs> He actually looked pretty good in this game, which was the the good thing about it. Um, he played 80 minutes, which is shocking to me. Obviously, I uh, I couldn't bring him in because I, I was wondering what happened because Sewer obviously went off and uh, I, I, I saw that, yeah, he had a, I don't know, a calf injury or something, which ruled him out because I was like, why the hell is Sewer off the field? Because Jack DeBallon obviously came in he was on the bench, he played lock, and I think Jack Bird went to into the back row. Now, if Sewer didn't get injured, does Ben Mokdomasilla play 80 minutes? I, like, I doubt it. Like, I would think DeBellin would come in and Jack Bird would trade places with uh, Murdoch Masilla. So I can't I can't bring Murdoch Masilla into the side. I just, yeah, the minutes worry me. Um and then, yeah, Hetherington, fucking 13 points. How has he been so shit? I, I thought Hetherington was a good signing. But he is... I mean, the Knights are actually going okay, uh, all things considered. But he has been atrocious. Uh, Fletcher Baker, Sami Solo, 14 points. I mean, look at the cheapies. They're trash. Um, Hamas Sale, 49. Josh Kerr, 59. What type of minutes is Sale playing? I mean, I've always, honestly, I've always loved Sale. I think he, I think he's a gun. He just, he just keeps getting injured and, and concussed, but he is, I think he's really good. Um, thankfully, he's only played the two games, so you can have another look on Sale. He's a little bit more expensive, um, but yeah, maybe. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's no one else. <laughs> there's no one else, dude. No one else of interest. Um, I mean, Griffin Neem, if he got more game time, he'd be he'd be okay. Uh, but the guy... Where is he? There he is, Isaac. Um, see what happens with Teamless? Honestly, if he gets a bench spot, I, I, I gotta be honest, I'm probably just gonna pull the trigger on him. Maybe? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not, because... Well, I don't know. His price is gonna go up now. He has played two games. He played, yeah, 25 minutes, 25 points. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what to do with fucking Welsh. I want to get rid of him, though. I really want to get rid of him. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one. We'll have to we'll have to look at team list and, and decide there. Uh, if you look at the 5-8s, that, that's the other position I was interested about. So, Dylan Brown, oh, yeah, he's gone down to 7.30. Um hopefully, well, that's the thing though, so he's gone down 50k now from his starting price, and now he's got the Tigers, so he could, it's an interesting one, because like, I feel like Mitchell Moses might take a lot of the attacking stats in this game, and Dylan Brown might not score that highly, even though it's a weaker opposition, um, Moses could take the, take the runs there, 
Uh, I guess they're taking on Dewey as well, funnily enough. Um, Cody Walker, 76. <laughs> starting, to, starting to score a few points. Walker, I still... Uh, I just can't see myself going Walker. He's just... I don't know. He's just not looking the player he was, even with a couple of decent scores. Adam Dewey... Like, look at... Dude, Adam Dewey is still the third highest scoring 5'8". The 5'8 spot is fucking dog. <laughs> it's awful. Ezra Mam, 47. Jackson Hastings, 97. Uh, Matt Burns, actually... I mean, Burns starting to hit a bit of form. <laughs> um, what's he scored? Yeah, 76, 50, 74. What have they got? South, Parramatta, Sharks, Dragons. Uh, I feel like it's too sideways, though, to go Dewey to, to, to Burden, really. Uh, Tommy Deedy, Cam Munster. I mean, Munster obviously has only played a couple of games, so he's he's a bit of an outlier. He'd probably be the top five eight if he if he played them all. Um, and then yeah, the rest of them just not really interested, uh, unfortunately. So no one. I mean, if Ko Weeks got more game time, he'd be a beauty, <laughs> but uh, not going to happen. I mean, I still I still stand by if Kalen Ponga comes back, he'd be a super pod to bring in. Um, because he looked damn good. He looked damn good in, in his opening couple of games. But uh, a little bit too risky at this point. So that's um, that'll probably wrap it up for this one. Um, yeah, the team's looking good. A couple of trades to make. Obviously, pending team list. But I think Cartwright's going to go to a cheapie. Dewey is on the chopping block. Christian Welsh potentially but i don't know who to go to and uh and then yeah the back line is it's, i'd love to bring in garrick now or well no i'm probably happy to wait two weeks um for him but yeah i mean there's a couple other center wings that are looking good but i just yeah i i don't want to trade out anyone <laughs> they're all they're all doing well i can't i can't trade them out so hopefully you guys are enjoying the super coach action make sure to like and comment and i'll see you guys in the next one